Okay, so I'd like to look at one of these tangent plane problems. I'd like to do something with a sphere, right, at some point on its surface. So I want to find uh, the equation for the tangent plane for a sphere at one point on its surface. So I'll just throw the sphere at the center of my coordinate system, right, x, y, and z. And then at some point here, um, s, I'll draw a plane, and that plane will be perpendicular to the sphere. All right, so I want to find this this plane that just touches the sphere right there. All right, um, so the things that I need to know, which I assume I'm given the things that I need to know, are that I have a sphere, and the sphere is um, described by the same old equation it always has been, x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals r squared, right? We're okay with that. And then I'm given a point on the sphere, right? And that point is going to be s equals xs, ys, and zs, all right? So I want to find this plane, um, find the tangent plane through s. Okay, so I just want to get this um, plane here. And it's all above that sphere. It only touches it at one point. Um, let's see. So how can we do this? Uh, well, first thing we need to do is remember that when we find a um, when we find the equation for a ten for a plane, we need the vector that's normal to that plane, right? And um, now we can do this in a couple of ways, and they're they're both equally valid. Um, you know, because it is a sphere, right? We already know that uh, this tangent vector is going to just be the same thing as this point s. Um, now, if you're going to um, if you're going to do this on a more complicated surface. Uh, then you need to find the gradient. So we already know that uh, we're going to get something like this. It's actually going to be proportional to s. So um, we find our normal vector by um, finding the gradient, and that gradient is of x squared plus y squared plus z squared. Uh, the r squared doesn't matter because we really only need something in that direction. It doesn't need to be normalized. And so we go through and um, do this. So we have um, ddx in the x hat direction plus ddy in the y hat direction plus ddz in the z hat direction. And this x squared plus y squared plus z squared is going to foil into that. All right. And when we do that, we end up with um, here 2x in the x hat direction plus 2y in the y hat direction plus 2z in the z hat direction. So this is actually for any tangent sphere, right? This is the gradient anywhere. But if I find the gradient at this point s, it's going to be 2xs, 2yS, 2zs, which is just twice s. So um, that's perfectly fine. Um, so that means that, um, actually I should evaluate that at s, right? I should be evaluating that at s, and that gives me what I just said, um, 2 times s. So now that we know the normal here, we can write the um, equation, right? So if you remember, the equation was going to be um, uh, the equation for the plane, right, so any point in the plane is going to be uh, x minus this point s, or I'll call that r, 
So r is just the position vector dotted in with the normal, whatever normal it is we had. So, right. And so in this case, that's just r dot n minus 2s squared. Right. So, um, so now we've got this tangent plane. Right. So if I do that, then um, let's see. So my equation for my tangent plane is, no, excuse me. And I forgot the most important part is this has to be equal to something, which is zero. So finding our tangent plane that way. All right, so R is X. This is um, times two XS. No, oh. So let's just write that out. All right, so we've got X, Y, Z dot two XS, Y, S, Z, S. All right, equals, I'll just slip that over there, two um, XS squared plus YS squared plus ZS squared, right? S squared is just um, the sum of the components. Um, so when I do this side here, uh, well, I'll cancel these two twos, and when I do this side here, I have X times XS plus Y times YS plus Z times ZS is equal to this thing here. But S is a point on the sphere, right? And it, for any point on the sphere, um, XS plus YS plus ZS, or X, plus, X squared plus Y squared plus Z squared, excuse me, is equal to R squared. So all this is just equal to R squared. So that is your equation for your tangent plane. Isn't that awesome? I think that's awesome. Um, let's see, I could do this another way, and why not? I've got plenty of time, right? Um, so let's just leave the answer up here and explore and see if I can make this work, right? So uh, let's see, A, let me, um, what I wanna do here is instead of doing it the way that I just did it, I want to do something a little more physically motivated. All right, so S is right here. So I'm going to draw a circle here and say, okay, well, the tangent line to that circle is in the tangent plane at that point, right? And then I'm going to find a um, second perpendicular tangent uh, or uh, point inside of this thing, uh, which I probably will need to do using the um, normal, but I can probably, maybe I can figure out another way, but, um, but anyways, you know, I'm just going to use some facts about the circle. I'm going to need to know something about, um, you know, this circle is part of the sphere and that's, and if you have a line that's any, any line through any, or any circle that goes through this point will have a, um, that is on the sphere. So I could cut it any way I want to right, and this guy here, any of these guys will be in this plane. It's just that this guy happens to be really easy, right? So, um, you know, if I write that, write the line for that circle, uh, that's going to be um, some circle as a function of um, some parameter, whatever parameter I like. Theta sounds like a fun one. Probably phi would be a better, a better one. Let's use phi instead. And that's equal to, um, well, what's the radius of this circle? Well, you know, it's got to be, um, you know, x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals r squared. This is going to be x squared plus y squared is equal to whatever is left over, right? So it's r squared minus z squared. So it's going to be the square root of r squared minus z squared times cosine phi in the x direction uh, plus the square root of r squared minus z squared times sine phi 
right? So that way I go all the way around here and I leave this at um, Z squared, I think, right? Z squared here or Z in the Z hat direction. So that's all I need to know about that guy. Um, now, like I said, I want to find the tangent. So if I find the tangent to this guy, that's just um, uh, dc d phi, right? You remember that? Not sure if that's in this cha in this chapter or the previous chapter, but um, you know, if I've parameterized a line, right, or a curve in terms of some parameter, if I take the derivative with respect to that parameter, I'm going to end up with the tangent line, which is very very nice. So. I'll just do that. So that means um, you know this r squared minus z squared has nothing to do with phi. So I have a d cosine phi, d phi here, x hat. I know what to do with that. And then again, this r squared minus z squared is not going to do anything interesting in my um, derivative. But I have a d sine phi, d phi. That'll do do well. And this z. Uh, well, it has nothing to do with phi again, so there is no z component anymore, and I can ignore it uh, if I'd like. And so I do, and that means I have, uh, well, let's go down here, equals minus the square root of r squared minus z squared sine phi, right? Plus the square root of r squared, oh, that's the x hat direction, excuse me, r squared minus z squared cosine phi, and that's the y hat direction. You might say, you know, I don't really like this because I'm still in terms of these phi's and I don't really know what phi means after I get off of the circle. So what you can do is you can look up here, sneak up here, and you can say, look, this r squared minus z squared times cosine phi, that's just um, xs, right? So this, at this particular point, right, if we evaluate this elsewhere, um, this is going to be just xs. So I'll just evaluate at s. That's the one where I'm going to get the um, tan that uh, tangent vector. So t hat or t 1, because I can get another one. Um, so now I can say, okay, if I evaluate this at um, s, right, uh, then this guy is just minus y in the x hat direction, ys in the x hat direction, and this guy is just xs in the y hat direction. Right? So now we have something that's getting right back to where we, where we started. Um, So what would I like to do with that? Um, well, let me write a line. Okay, and that line is um, going to be inside of that tangent. It's going to be, or inside of this tangent plane, so it's going to use this tangent. So that line as um, a function of some parameter t is, is going to equal s plus t1 times t, right? And that's just going to be, um, what what is this? Uh, s is xs minus y s t comma y s minus xs t comma um, z s right okay well that that seems pretty good to me uh, I guess a question we might have is is that actually is any point there actually on our plane right wouldn't you like to know that I think that's a pretty interesting question so let's check if L of t is in, um, 
I didn't give a name to this plane. Let's call him P. Let's just call him plane. Okay, so well, I'll just use this criterion here, right? So to do the check, I just do X. Okay, so I've got X, which is going to be this thing, right? XS minus YST times X S, right? Plus YS minus XST times YS plus ZS times ZS, right? So if I add all this together and it comes up peanuts or com comes up um, R squared, then we'll end up with, um, we'll end up having uh, shown that this line that I found some other way uh, satisfies that equation. So we have a good reason to believe that uh, what we've done is correct. It's always good to have a good reason to believe that what you've done is correct. It's better than having no reason other than, you know, I followed the procedure because sometimes that doesn't work out quite the way you want it to. So I've got XS here squared. Uh, this XS YST, that cancels, that cancels with this XS YST, so we just come to this YS squared and the ZS squared. We add those all together and that gives us R squared, like we said, so that's okay. Um, yeah, so let's see how much room do I, oh, I don't have any room left. Ooh, okay, so let's see if I can find that other vector in half a line. So that other vector, so I wanna find that other tangent because now it's just burning a hole in my brain, right? And the way I do that is T2 is going to be perpendicular to N and to um, T1. And I'll just switch this to S here because, you know, at this point the magnitudes don't matter. Um, but, you know, this is how you do it if you had, say, some other form, if you had, say, like an ellipsoid or something, maybe in your homework, right? Uh, then, you know, you might want to do it this way. Um, so, S is XS, YS, ZS. And the tangent thing that I wrote up here was uh, minus YS, XS, zero. Okay, so since we're doing a cross product, I guess the first thing is just, let's see, ys times zero minus uh, zs times xs. So minus xs zs. Um, then we have um, zero times xs minus, or, or well, I guess zs times ys is positive, so minus ys zs. Um, right, yeah, so this guy to that guy, anti-cyclic, all right. And then this guy here, which looks like xs times ys minus minus ys times xs, which is just two xs ys. So I neither have room nor time to go through and show that this is a um, this is going to give you another line in that plane, uh, but you know you can do it on your own and tell me how well I did here. Uh, I think this was a lot of fun, and it really is fun exploring these geometrical things with uh, vector mathematics. And I hope you have as much fun as I have. Bye now.